stick around because in this video I'm talking about five things that soldiers can't do when they're deployed to a combat zone. What's up friends, I'm US Army veteran Christopher Chaos and in this video I'm gonna talk about five things that you can't do if you're deployed to at least a combat zone. Now of course there are a lot more than just five things you can do but I just kinda of singled out these five things to talk about them with you guys here in this video. Now specifically they are to a combat zone because the army still can categorize things like a deployment. So like if a unit goes from you know where they're located in the United States to maybe Germany or Korea just for like a six month deployment as they call it, then that's not necessarily a combat deployment. That's just a deployment where you go with your unit. I'm specifically talking about combat deployments. Because combat deployments have a lot more restrictions than just a regular deployment. So I've narrowed down five things to talk about that are things you're not allowed to do if you are deployed in a combat zone. Now just so you know a little bit where I'm coming from, I did serve a little over 10 years in the army and I deployed twice to Iraq. So I do have experience in a combat zone with these rules. So let's dive right into them. No particular order, let's start off with the very first one. So when you're deployed to a combat zone, don't expect to get to wear civilian clothing as civilian clothing is not allowed when you are in a combat zone. Soldiers do usually bring one set of civilian clothing and that's usually just for like emergency leave or sometimes some units want them to change into civilian clothing when they're on their way maybe to go visit family for their uh, kind of vacation that they usually get somewhere in the middle, maybe the beginning or the end of the deployment and they may want them to change into civilian clothing rather than traveling the whole entire time in their army combat uniform. Now some soldiers like to maybe have like you know some type of civilian clothing to sleep in uh, but the only problem with that is that you don't usually live in like a type of barracks you would in the States or anything like that. Uh, you may be living in a tent, you may be living in what's called a chew, which is like a little connex, or you might be living in some kind of building and the bathrooms may not be in the same place where you're sleeping as in like you traditionally be used to like with a barracks room. Like when I was deployed, you had like a shower trailer. You had to go utilize that to go shower in, to use the bathrooms, or even a porter potty. And so if in the middle of the night you have to go to the bathroom, you, they don't want you walking around in these civilian clothes, even if it's just a short little distance over to the bathroom trailer or the porter potties or whatever. So while you're deployed, you're pretty much restricted to the army combat uniform and your physical fitness uniform. Next on the list I have, you're not gonna be able to go sightseeing. So don't expect to go on a deployment and get to check out some of the sites of Iraq or Afghanistan or whatever your combat deployment happens to take you. That is not a thing you're gonna get to you know, see. Of course, this is common sense for probably someone who's been in the army for a while, but if you're not in the army yet or you're thinking about it, whatever, and you're thinking that, oh cool, I wanna get deployed and go to Afghanistan and check out some of the local culture while I'm there, you're not really gonna get a chance to actually do that. You'll see a little bit of it like when you're on mission and everything, but it's not like you might expect. You're not gonna go take some tour to see some cool things or some kind of bus ride to go check sites out and walk around and everything. I mean, for the most part, a lot of people in these areas sometimes wanna kill you, so it's not really a great place for tourists of that type of thing. So you're not gonna get to sightsee. You'll you'll see some sights, sure, when you're out on a mission, but it's not gonna be, you know, with your American flag t-shirt and a camera and snapping pictures all over the place and checking out the local sites and sending back postcards home. So the third thing I've got on this list is in the event of maybe a soldier in your unit dying or maybe even in some cases seriously injured, you're not gonna be able to call home or use the internet during that time frame. So what happens is the units want to be able to have ample amount of time to be able to notify that spouse or that family of that soldier that was either killed or seriously injured of what happened rather than people getting on the internet and talking about it and calling home and talking about it. And then the family finds out secondhand from like social media or the neighbor down the street because you know, their husband or boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever you know is deployed and told them about it over the phone. So in those events, they shut everything down. No phones, no internet, and even if you're lucky enough to be on one of those bases or fobs that have their own internet service, they're gonna shut that down too, so you won't have internet in your room. So there's nowhere you're gonna be able to use the phones or the internet uh, until they've you know had enough time to notify the family. Sometimes this lasts a day, two days, three days. Uh, usually it doesn't last a real, real long time, but they definitely have to have enough time to notify the family before people start talking about it on social media or calling home and talking about it and then the spouse or family of that soldier finds out secondhand from somebody else. Next I got the fourth thing on my list and that is going to be that you are not allowed to drink alcohol when you're on a combat deployment. So don't expect on your free time to you know have a few beers, get a little bit of you know tipsy or whatever. It's not going to be allowed. You're you know in a combat environment. They want everybody to stay alert, to be ready, 
you know, if anything happens, to be able to leave the gate, to be able to man your positions, whatever the case might be. So you're not gonna be able to go and you know enjoy a beer, even not even just one. They have like in the chow hall, what's called near beer, they have like usually like Oduls, that's like non-alcoholic beer. So if you just really enjoy the taste of beer, you might be able to enjoy a non-alcoholic beer while you're sitting down and having your meal, but that's gonna be it. Nothing with actually alcohol in it. Now, I think actually Oduls might be like a real, real small percentage of alcohol in there to where you could probably drink a lot of them and maybe feel a little bit, but I'm sure you'd probably get sick before you felt any kind of buzz off of that. Now, on my second deployment when I was in Iraq, we actually had a situation where uh, soldiers were allowed to have two beers during the Super Bowl. Basically, the way they did it is if you wanted to go watch the Super Bowl and have two beers while watching the Super Bowl, it was like at one o'clock in the morning or something, but you had to put your name on a list so that we either had your name on a roster of you know who was authorized to go to the Super Bowl, um, to watch it at the defect, and uh, have these two beers. And then when you would go up there to grab your beer, you grab one, they check your name off, that you've received one and then you go up and get a second one. Now, some people would kind of scam the system still and bring a buddy with them that they knew wasn't gonna drink any of the beers and then they would get their two beers and just pass it off to their friend and maybe that person got to have four beers during the Super Bowl, but you know, that's kind of a limited thing. Not every unit is going to be like that. It's gonna be a case by case basis on leadership if they really want to authorize that. But for the most part, your entire deployment, you're not gonna get to drink any alcohol unless you're lucky enough to have a situation like that. And then maybe you might get to have two beers or something. And the fifth and last thing you are not going to be able to do on a combat deployment is have sex. Sure, people are probably still gonna do it. I've known cases where people sneak off to a porter potty or into a truck or something, but you're actually not allowed to. They don't want to take any kind of risk of someone getting pregnant while they're deployed because they're gonna have to send you home and just other things that you know go along with it, STDs or whatever. So sex is off the table when you're on a combat deployment. Now, my second unit that I was deployed with they actually had a policy, I don't know if it was like kind of a army wide thing or just something that they were doing, but for married couples that were deployed together, they were allowing them to have sexual intercourse with each other, but that was pretty much the only kind of special case scenario. Like I said, I don't know if that was army wide thing or just some special thing my unit was doing, but they did have a few cases here and there where soldiers were you know, married to another soldier that was also in that same unit or an adjacent unit, and they would have some time maybe to be alone if they wanted to be in, they were, I guess, allowed to have sex. But unless you're in some kind of special unit that's going to grant some kind of special permission for that, you're not allowed to have, you know, sex while you're deployed. I mean, like I said, some people will do it anyways, but you're not allowed to. So like I said, there are more than five things that you're not allowed to do in a combat deployment. So if you have any experience with being on a deployment and you can think of something else that you're not allowed to do while on deployment, make sure to leave some comments down below. If you are not in the military and you have some questions, make sure to leave those down below as well and I'll try to help you out or some of my veteran viewers can try to help out. If you liked the video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. If you wanna check out some more content, you don't have to leave, you can check these guys out. I'm sure they're great. And of course, as always, if you are not yet subscribed to my channel, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, I'm Christopher Chaos and I'll see you next time. See ya.